Hello, my name is Matthew, and I'm an engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Artex Scanner's latest release is the Ray 2, an upgraded version of the original LiDAR scanner with several new features and ways to capture large objects. Sporting new cameras, on-screen displays, and a faster speed, you'll be able to capture millions of points across several meters of distance in minutes, which can be processed inside of Artex Studio. In today's video, we'll go over setting up the Ray 2 and starting your first scan. The Ray 2 will come with a Pelican case, with the top side either indicated by an arrow attachment or a picture showing how to store the Ray in the rain. Inside will contain the Ray 2, two USB sticks to store data, a few rechargeable batteries, an adapter for tripods, and a battery charger with cords. The battery charger has four available slots. Simply slide the batteries into place and wait for the green light to indicate it's connected and the charge status. To set up the Ray 2, there are three steps, placing it on the adapter, inserting the batteries, and then the USB stick. To place the Ray 2 on the adapter, set it on a simple surface and detach the latch on the bottom of the Ray. This allows you to place the scanner on the adapter and lock it into place by reusing the latch. The batteries are installed two at a time where the large flap door is. The inserts match the shape of the battery, so simply slide them into place. You can remove the batteries using the red buttons to detach them for removal. There is also a spot on the Ray's base where you can connect a power cord to and hook it up to a wall. The USB plugs into a smaller flap on the other side of the scanner. This is also a unique shape to ensure that it's plugged in at the right direction. As simple as it may seem, we're pretty much done with the setup. We can now attach the Ray onto a tripod or scan on top of a flat, steady surface. To turn on the scanner, click the power button and wait for it and the Ray 2 to shine green. You'll also want to avoid touching any of the cameras during setup since they can affect the data quality and usability of the Ray 2. Once the scanner is on, we can change the project and some of the scanner settings via the touchscreen menu. The top left has a way to select from a list of projects and associated scans found on the USB stick if you need to revisit an old one and add more scans to it. You can also add or remove projects from the list here as well. On the main screen, there are four buttons under the play button, which is related to how the scan will be made. We can adjust the point density if we need more detail within the scan we can add color photos to the scan, which will make alignment easier within Artex Studio. We can also create a dual scan, which will scan the area twice and remove differences between the data sets, so that way it can help filter out movements and other noise data that might have been captured. Finally, there is a new VIS positioning, which will attempt to auto-align the scans together if the previous position is visible in the next scans. I highly recommend keeping this setting enabled, as it will help with the alignment process inside of Artex Studio. The top right button of the touchscreen will open a detailed options menu where we can adjust the scan settings or see more information about the scanner. New with the Ray 2 and seen within these settings is the ability to run a GPS, compass, and altimeter configuration. GPS and altimeter does require a process to be run outside for an initial positioning, and once done, it can provide additional alignment help when importing in larger sets of data for processing. Both the GPS and VIS settings are helpful for people who want to capture larger data sets or floor plans made from several scans. The auto alignment of the scans together during the import process is incredibly helpful since aligning LiDAR data can often be the longest process to do manually. Once you have the scan settings how you like, simply click the play button and let the scanner run. It will do a 360 scan of the area and then take several colored photos with the color cameras if it was enabled. When running a scan, there's a few things to keep in mind. The wind speed of the environment to ensure that your scanner doesn't shake. Lighting if you want color photos. Since this is a LiDAR scanner, the lighting won't affect the raw data itself unless it is a clear or a shiny black material surface. That you have enough overlapping data between the scans to align them together within Artex Studio. The scanner is upright and not in a tilted angle when starting a scan. Finally, that the object you want to scan is within eyesight of the scanner's lens and won't be obstructed by moving objects, though the dual scan settings can help with that. 
A preview of the scan will appear on the screen when complete, along with a green light below the lens, indicating that it is ready to be moved. After a scan is done, it will automatically be saved to the project on the USB stick, so you can move the scanner to the next position and start again. Once you have all of the data you need, we can import the scan data into Artec Studio via the Import Scans from Ray 2 option. Navigate to the USB stick that the scans were saved onto after removing it from the ray and plugging it into your computer. In the master folder, you'll see several individual projects with scans inside of them, but we'll need to click on the project.artech file to actually import in the data. Opening this will show you all the scans on the USB along with information about the scans and a preview to make sure you're selecting on the right one. Clicking Import Scans starts the process, and after a bit of time, we'll see our scans appear within Artec Studio. If the GPS or VIS setting was enabled during the scanning process, the scans should open up in their real-world positions from each other. Any color captured is also applied to the point clouds for a preview as well. The Ray 2 is a phenomenal LiDAR scanner. Due to its fast speed, high level of detail that can be captured, the auto positioning of the scan data, and the ease of setting up. I hope this video helps you get started with the Ray 2 and understanding some of the tools and settings that come with the scanner. If you're interested in learning more, please contact us for any questions or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on 3D scanning, printing, or other engineering software.